Last time we found out we could no longer reverse. After trying to find solutions in the uni, we decided to head to the Chilean border for some quicker ways to solve our transmission problem. Good morning from Chile. Chile! <laughs> Let's go check if the van is gonna make it another day. Left at a gas station. Oh, is there a leak? There is no puddle. And that is a good sign. I heard some uh, talk from the ProMaster forum that I should try on plugging these sensors. Could just be sensors. I don't know. I'm just glad babe, there's no leak. Yay! Yeah, <laughs> so he did fix it. Yeah, he fixed that leak. But let's go get that fluid. Yeah, well, first we're gonna go try some food, some local food, huh? Yeah. People say Chile doesn't have good food. So <laughs> let's see what we can rustle up yeah. over here. <laughs> But unfortunately, we have an engine code. It's the oil pressure sensor in the engine again. It hasn't seemed to cause an issue so far. <sighs> the guy told me my surfboard would be gone in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Baby! Gracias, sombrita. Buena guardia. <laughs> Buena chiqui. So what do you think, Emily, your first restaurant in Chile? I thought it was pretty good. Nice matcha latte. Pricier though, mine was 10 bucks. Was it? It was a nice little feast. Mine was like $3, so. <laughs> oh yeah. So the other thing that we do whenever we enter a country is get a new SIM card for our phones. Danny used to be on Google Fi, but they cut him off. <laughs> so he has been joining the struggle with me of not having cell phone service until you get a chip. So I think one of us is gonna get Intel and the other is gonna get Claro. So all of the little tienditas on the corners of each block, they do sell chips for SIM cards so that you can immediately start using your phone. The only problem with that is is that they don't register the phone. So in about a month, your phone won't work anymore. And that's fine if you only are gonna be in the country for a couple of weeks or less than a month. But we're planning on being here for three. So we have to go to a real Claro store and register our phone. And that's just so that they have our phone in their system just in case it gets stolen. Oh my gosh. Parking in the city is much harder than I expected without reverse. <laughs> But Emily is super smart. She, this looks flat to me, but she said, it's slightly uphill there. So, you know, I was able to find this parallel parking spot, pull in, <laughs> put it in neutral, back up. I think it's because I had the, a stick shift for so long that I like <laughs> never used reverse. So it just slides into places. Yeah. yeah. And we're only like a block away from the main stores of Claro and Intel. So we'll leave the dog here. This is pretty sketchy, I guess. Um, so wish us luck. So we got our phones registered and two new chips. I got Intel, then we got Claro. And for the registration, they actually wouldn't do it at the store, which is really wild. I can get unlimited everything for seven days for six dollars, six US dollars. So that's only twenty-one dollars a month, or like you know, twenty-some dollars a month for unlimited everything for me, which is pretty great. Yeah, for me, for $3, I can get 15 gigabytes. That's crazy. That's yeah. so cheap. And the SIM cards we did pay, I think, like... Uh, 2,000 pesos. So probably two like, and a half dollars each for yeah. our SIM cards. But that includes um, like a gig for her and I think two for me. Yeah, so we got phones again. Yeah, we got Google Maps live. We're going to go pick up our transmission fluid. It's pretty hard to come by down here. ATF plus four got the exact right brand, exact right one, and six quarts was about $100, so not bad. I don't know how much it costs in the U.S. I've spent that much on oil. We've decided just to get out of this city, Calama, because there's so many warnings here on iOverlander about robberies, thefts, and the next town is called Antofagos, Antofagasta. It's right by the coast, which sounds nice, and there's also no warnings. In this city, was a huge step up from where we were in Bolivia, Uyuni. Oh, Chile is a huge step up in infrastructure. The prices are more. That's how things are going right now. And I looked up and I just saw like a measly little sign that said Tropic of Capricorn line. 
So we just crossed the Tropic of Capricorn! We're so far! We crossed the Tropic of Cancer when we were going down Baja California. So we've crossed like an insane amount of the planet now. Whenever we passed the Tropic of Cancer, I was like, oh, we're really starting this thing, you know? Welcome to Antofagasta. Well, probably the main thing for me is this skate park right there. The van is right across the street. Not too bad. <laughs> Very nice trucker that pulled up. <laughs> I was chatting with him for quite a while. Like an hour, <laughs> like an hour and a half. And he mentioned what might be a good idea is there's a port right here, a dry port. He said it would be about as cheap as the gasoline and the tolls to get down to Santiago. Then we wouldn't have to worry about the transmission and just get it looked at while we have our apartment there. On Google Maps and iOverlander, I've messaged a ton of different transmission places any that I can find. We got a guy who kind of has an overlander spot, like very close to here. And he came and knocked on the van, I guess, when we were across the He said, hey, there's nobody here but a cat. But anyway, he's gonna roll back up in about five minutes and have a chat about, I don't know what we're gonna chat about, but we're just trying everything we can to figure out what we can do. Good morning. We're gonna try and change the transmission fluid and see if that helps us out at all. And then after that, we have two plans. Wait until Wednesday to get another mechanic to look at the van, who's actually a automatic transmission mechanic. Drive ourselves to Santiago, or load up the van on a flatbed and have it being brought to Santiago. Best case scenario, we can drive out and drive ourselves to Santiago. I'm tense <laughs> and Emily's great. The van is under the knife now. We just got to wait and see the toughest moment of van life. Just waiting to see is a mechanic able to do a complicated job well. A non-standard job for him. Getting stuck somewhere. This is definitely the worst part. The hardest part. Being at a mechanic and we've done it way too much lately. So there's a slight chance this gets us driving well again. If we get the filter out and the filter's completely clogged, this could fix everything. If we get the filter out and we see pieces of metal in there, that's bad. We shouldn't drive to Santiago. If in the liquid there's black fibrous material, that's like the wear parts, that's not as bad as metal, <laughs> you know. It's a waiting game now and it's nerve wracking and thank you so much Emily. <laughs> Welcome, for helping me try to relax. Okay, so here it's almost off. It's got the screws off. Now we got this guy cracked open. That's the filter. It smells super burnt. So we found a piece of metal. Oh boy. So it's really bad that we found that piece of metal already. Now we're seeing some of this black fibrous material, which is the wear pieces of the clutch. Wow, what is that? Look at this piece. It was a huge piece of metal. Oh my God. That's not good. More of that black stuff. Oh no, inside of the filter, there was a lot more pieces of metal. We got a whole gear. Yeah. It's a Dodge Ram Promaster. Okay, we got the filter changed, the fluid changed, and we know what the problem is. Well, they were pretty great in there, helped us get that all figured out, but on the way out, the fan got ripped open. All right, got that fan fixed enough, seems good, which is great, because this is kind of a garbage dump out front here, the mechanics. <laughs> 
Oh, what a life. So we have to hit the dry port. We're here asking truckers for favors. <laughs> Apparently that side is going north. Up here, they say, are people heading to Santiago. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever done in my life. Hey, Emily. I know I've only been gone about five minutes, but we've already found a truck. 300 lucas. The gasoline price would be $300. Oh, you got the keys? We gotta go. We gotta go load up on the truck right now. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You ready to go? We're going to Santiago today. Oh my god. Yeah, there's just a whole bunch of truckers here just waiting to take Do people. This? <laughs> it seems like a, a niche kind of thing. Oh, it's in a colina. Oh, it's a container. Problema era que yo pensé que no era contenedor, pero algo plano. We decided not to be trapped in there claustrophobically. And this guy offered us the same price. He's got a flatbed. Second try, that was really good that Emily recommended we not do that. Yeah, he said we could bring the pets up front and everything. We're getting it for like just as cheap as driving there. And yet for them, they're excited about it. Maybe I should have offered less. But we can stay in the van. Yeah, I would much rather be in the van. It's just easier because then we don't have to have the cat in a container. You said it would be a different price, you remember? For... Yeah, he just wants to leave. There's already a car in there. He's got like a daughter in there. They were just having a nap. Oh. I really understand where Danny's coming from. Like, yeah, just, uh, Give it full blast all the way onto this truck. And we're gonna put a bunch of pieces of broken pallet down so that you can make it over the top of it. I better put this down before I try and make this walk over to the door. Look at this rent, by the way. That is DIY. 18 hours to Santiago. So how do you get in the van? got some empanadas. He said there might even be a shower on the way. Don't get my hopes up like that. At the rest stops. What? <laughs> empanadas the size of your head. Double Decker Van Life Part 2. Look <laughs> out, no hands. <laughs> what do you think, Sombrita? Who's driving? Sombrita, are you driving, girl? She seems kind of freaked out. This should be an 18 hour ride. When we were coming from Oyuni, that pass was so dusty that honestly, the corner of the bed is like a desert right over there. Now we're gonna look into, can we rent a place in Santiago for a month? And we also have two mechanics that we found that they both sound pretty rep reputable. 18 hours, we got some work to do. Better get to it. Man, this is so crazy right now. I think 
there's just so many things to fix. Obviously, the most important is the transmission. And we got these uh, gas station coffees here. That helps a bit. At least our current house is on wheels, even if we need to push it. Hopefully, by the time we get to Santiago, about five hours, we can hammer down a place to live. I was able to get one guy off of Airbnb. On Airbnb, his place is like 1600 for the month. Kind of pricey. So I'm trying to work on him on that. You find something in Airbnb, you talk to the guy, I say, hey, can I see it? And then you can get out of Airbnb's 20% cut. For locals, an apartment should be like uh, 500,000 Chilean pesos a month. I know we could do better, but I get to enjoy the countryside without driving. Just so much up in the air, doing our best. This is about hour 25 of our ride on the back of a truck to Santiago, Chile. We have an apartment lined up and we get to look at it first too. <laughs> so we're gonna park in this spot for my Overlander and go take a peek. Always good to just check it out first. If that doesn't work, Emily even lined up another one in person to check out another apartment tomorrow morning. Hopefully the van can drive the minimal distances required today. Yeah, we're making good time. I'm, 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 not, I'm not eating it, you know? Who's driving? Huh? Who's driving? Sombrita! Sombrita! Get, get your hands on the wheel! What Okay, we're almost to the loading dock. Hopefully this one is better than the last one because the last one was kind of sketchy and we also have to push ourselves off of this one. Change of plans. The holiday might have helped us get a good deal, but it's not helping us get unloaded. <laughs> this place was completely closed, so he said, we're gonna have to cross town. Just 30 minutes, but he said it's free to unload there. We should still make it on time to our meeting to check out the apartment, but whatever, that's tangential. It's better just to get this figured out first, of course. Okay, so here's our loading dock. Unloading dock. That's a bit of a gap there. Okay, so you gotta turn the wheel a little bit left, okay? Okay. We made it off of the back of that truck and we're driving the van. It feels okay though, right now, so that's good. Pretty wild getting the van off of that truck. The truck is a little bit higher than the dock, so we had to load up on different rocks and everything to make it so that the van wouldn't scrape the metal on the way down. I just put it into neutral and Danny pushed the van. I never really thought about it before, but yeah, getting a flatbed when there's a dock around to tow you somewhere. This is the best way to go if you have to go a very long time. <laughs> Welcome to Santiago. We're killing it today. So we managed to get the van driven to Glad potentially here. its final resting place. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> nah, but, but it made it across town and now we get to walk and go check out an apartment. We got a list of things to check, you know, how they let the dog on the elevator, not make us walk like in Cartagena. Yeah, we're oh, so yeah, many we'll stairs. Yeah. Pot of water. So let's go check it out. We'll see you guys next time as we switch from full-time van life to fixing the van life. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video, share it. And if you'd like to support us a little more, check out our Patreon. See ya. Mm -hmm.